Hi, this is Terry from Fabric Junction, and I'm here to show you another one of our six and a half inch blocks that we have been posting on our blog at Fabric Junction Jewels. And to show you how different they can look in how you can change the fabrics up. The block is the Calico Puzzle. These are the ones that I did for my quilt. Oh, and I got a little more salvage on that one than I like, but it'll disappear. But either way, these are the ones that are going to go into my actual quilt that I am making of my six and a half inch uh, blocks. So with the Calico Puzzle, you'll have five squares. And as you can see, I found a fun, better arrange them a little different, I found a fun piece of fabric from Doctor Who to play with on this one. So if I get my layout correct, I'm so used to doing the other kind of layout, you know how that goes, and then the corners are half square triangles. Now to do the half square triangle, I do mark one of my pieces. I use my quarter inch seam marker and you can go from the corner to corner and I have to use a pencil that's very sharp so I get just a nice clean line. You can use your mechanical and your any of your other marking tools, whatever you're comfortable with. I marked both of those. Now that is my stitch line. And normally I stitch as close to that line as I can to be either right on top of it or if I have if I can't be on top of it, at least I'm on the side of it that's on the seam allowance side because I don't want to make my half square triangles smaller by sewing on the um, outer side. Anyway, let's get to sewing. They're marked, they're lined up, and when I'm making a lot, I chain piece. So I line up my pieces, sometimes my squares don't match perfect, but I know there that they'll line up beautifully. I'll go through and I'll do my whole row, I get down to the end and I just give them a quick turn and I send them right back through. The size of all my pieces is posted on the blog, so if you would go to the blog and, and just Google the Calico Puzzle, up will come the page in which this one was posted. As you can see, I'm doing my cutting. And now I can press, and my other piece side is a little darker, so I'm going to press to the dark, get that layer, there they go. Whoop. Get it to crinkle up. I did, I caught it just right with my iron, I got a little crinkle in it. So my best press is handy because that will take out that little crinkle. There we go. I got quite a bit of it on there, but that will take out that little crinkle that I made. Or any crinkle. Always have my best press handy. There. So now I have all my pieces. So now the next step is to get rid of all the little dog ears. And when I do this, when I'm sewing, I'm jelly over top of my little garbage so that they go right into my little garbage pail. So I don't have to hunt for them or to find them to throw them away. Okay, we have all of our parts. So then I need to make sure I refer to 
Uh, let's see, which way are we laying? Across the top. Find myself a spot that, there we go. To make sure I get all my little pieces headed the right direction. Because it is easy. I gotta remember, the line goes like an X. So if I remember that part, there we go. There are my pieces. Now to sew it together, from my side, I start, I have my left, I take my center one, and I flip it over. And I sew it, and I sew the next one, I sew the next one, I open them up and do the, the next one. I'm not going to go that far because I know you know how to do that. So once you have it sewn together, and then once those are sewn together, you come back and sew the other way. You don't have to take them apart. The little seam keeps them right in the order that you want them. So this is a, this creates a six and a half. I want this to be about an eight and a half, an eight, eight and a half, nine, finished pot holder. So this one I added a little bitty border, and my pieces are one and a half by six and a half that I add my sides, and then the top is one and a half by eight and a half, and those go across the bottom, and that makes my pot holder. Now once I have that sewn together, I put a layer of backing, in which I got the great TARDIS there, one piece of batting, and then I use Insulbrite, because then I don't have to make the pot holder really, really thick. It's just the right thickness. Um, if you want, you can use just one layer of Insulbrite. It works well by itself. If you don't have the Insulbrite, make sure you use at least three layers of the cotton. It does make them bulky. They do get really bulky. And to make a nice pot holder easy, you don't want it to get super thick. And you can hear the little noise that's in them, and that's from the metallic. So you cannot put these in the microwave. Once you have that done, you're binding, and it is uh, either a two and a quarter or two and a half, either one, I use either one, strip, and go to our video on binding a pot holder. So if you decide that this is the pattern that you're going to do and you're going to make a great pot holder for a friend or for yourself, go to the video and I show you how to bind it. Otherwise, it'll make a great quilt. You know, if you look at how the pieces will go to each other, they would actually go together or something. They would line up side by side similar to that. You know, it's up to you. Be creative. And you can uh, let us know what you have made with, with your um, six and a half inch block. With that, thank you for watching us here at Fabric Junction. And I hope you have fun with our Calico Puzzle block. And check out our blog and our website. And again, thank you for watching.